My name is Joe Hinkle. This training is on Hinkle Controller Configuration E131 ArcNet DDP. This page is one of the two most important configuration pages within the controller. This is a page that's used to map the data that is being transmitted or being packaged by, let's say, X-Lights or LOR or some other uh, sequencer that is to be received by the controller. There's a lot of E131 message packets that are being transmitted when your show has multiple controllers. This is the page that tells your specific controller what packets to listen for. Um, the modes are unicast, multicast. Unicast means that your sequencer is sending out messages uniquely to your specific IP. In my case, my IP is 192, 161, 182. So all of the address, all of the E131 packets are coming specifically to that um, controller. The other method is multicast. Multicast is just being transmitted to everybody. What happens is in the address of multicast, it can be extracted what universes are set up for this particular controller. My recommendation, if at all possible, run with unicast. If you have problems, there are tools like Wireshark and whatever that can help you identify where your networking issues are and they're much easier to use if you're running under unicast. Protocol. There's three protocols that are typically used to transmit data from a sequencer. E131 and ArtNet are pretty close to one another. They both have identifiers by the name of universe and channels that are used in the association with both of these. And I'll get into them in a minute. They're pretty close. Um, they both have packet sizes, uh, data payloads of 512 bytes, and they're pretty much the same. DDP is fairly new. That's used by some high-end techies. Probably 90% of the people are not going to be using DDP. DDP is very efficient in transmitting the data, but you still got to convert it over, as we'll see in the output settings, based on channel information. And that just puts a little more technical responsibility on the user. So I'm going to suggest that you stay with E131. This page identifies how many universes, or how many E131 packets, I should say, uh, this controller is going to be listening for, acquiring off of the inter off of the Ethernet, and working with. Now, you have up to 145 universes that you can work with on this particular controller. You've got 144 that are associated with your spy ports, and you have one associated with DMX. You want to set this number of universes equal to the number of universes that either X-Lights or LOR or whatever other sequence you're using is transmitting. The reason is, is if you identify more, you're just telling the controller there's more work it's got to do and there's really no data there. So it's wasting a lot of time doing pretty much nothing. These two buttons allow you to effectively come in and quickly set these two column values. So I could come in and say my first universe here is going to be 101. 
And if I click that, now it numbers at 101. And if I come over here and said my number of channels per universe is 300, it'll set it at 300. So now, let me explain a little bit about universe and channel numbers. Um, there'll be another video on how this correlates uniquely with an XLights application, so you get some real time. But in general, universe numbers are not, let me repeat, not associated directly with ports. My terminology of a port is an output setting. Like this driver utilizes ports 1 through 16. This one, 17 through 32. 33 through 48. This particular controller that I'm using for this demo can have 48 pixel strings associated with it. Any of those pixel strings can have up to 680 pixels on them. The universe number is an identifier to an E131 packet just to differentiate itself from all other universes that are being transmitted. It is a number that can range from 1 to approximately 65,000. It's a 16-bit number, okay? So these numbers do not associate themselves. A lot of people think they associate themselves with uh, uh, ports. So universe 1 has to go to port 1. Universe 2 has to go to port 2. Not correct. Universe numbers are strictly identifiers for E131 transmission packets. Think about this. Think about a jigsaw puzzle. And the complete picture of the jigsaw puzzle is your show. And we'll use X lights in for the rest of this uh, discussion as the sequencer. X lights paints a picture on your jigsaw. It is then responsible for transmitting all of the pixels that make up your that picture to your controller. Well, it just can't pick up the whole thing and, and shove it over the Ethernet. It has to divide it into little bytes. Remember a jigsaw puzzle breaks apart into little pieces? It's got to break it into little pieces and deliver to your controller pieces of that picture the controller then has to put it together. Well, each of those pieces that are broken apart and delivered is an E131 packet that has a universe number. Okay? And within that packet, it says how many channels are delivered within there. Now, the number of channels is the number of data. It can range from 1 to to 512 but the way we're all using it we're talking with pixels a pixel is three channels why because it has three LEDs it has a red LED a green and a blue each channel is a can range from 0 to 255 it's a byte it's an 8-bit number it identifies the intensity of a red, green, or blue LED. So when you light up an LED, a, one very specific LED, you're actually lighting up, excuse me, when you're lighting up a specific pixel, you're lighting up three LEDs. Each of those LEDs have a, can have a different intensity. Each LED intensity is a channel. So if you have 50 pixels in a packet, 50 pixels times 3 is 150 channels. Now, the most you really want, I told you before, you can have 512. I suggest you never put 512. Why? 512 is not divisible by 3. The most you can have for evenly uh, extracting pixels is 510. If you put 512, 
that means that more than likely the green or the blue pixel is not going to be in one universe transmission. It's going to be in another E131 packet that has a different universe. Uh, so, yes, you are losing the ability of sending two more channels, but from a debugging point of view and from a construction point of view, I highly recommend you don't use more than 510 channels per universe. Now, these two columns here, universe number and channels per universe, these need to match what's over in X lights or over in your sequencer. Now, the order that you put them here is important because these two columns tell the controller how to put all those packages together to put the picture over in the controller so the, so the controller can reproduce that picture by controlling its pixels or its lights. And in another video, we'll get into output settings and you'll find that output settings use these channel numbers, okay? So, you could be, and I'll just show you this. Let us just say that, um, see, I can make this channel one. Or I can make this, yeah, we'll make that channel one, I, universe one, excuse me, I can make that universe five, and then et cetera, et cetera. What I told the controller is, hey, when you receive universe one, it's going to contain 150 channels. I want you to put it in the controller's jigsaw puzzle, put it in so it occupies channels one through 150. When you receive universe five, I want you to put it in so it occupies 151 to 300. When you get 103, I want you to put it here. Now what happens if universe two is transmitted. The controller ignores it because it's not identified within this array of numbers, okay? Hopefully that hasn't been confusing. Uh, this is one of the most confusing parts because unfortunately a lot of people think universes are associated with actual output ports. This is nothing more than mapping what X lights is transmitting over to your controller. So these numbers, as you'll see in the next video, these are the numbers that are used when we're up in output settings. Now, if these numbers jump around, feel free to use these as I just did. So let's say the majority of these are 300. I could come over here and do 300 like this. But I know that that one's 150, so I'll just make that one 150, and I'll make that one 150, and I'll make this one 270, and I'll make this one 150. So these two buttons up here and the values, they're nothing more than, you know, depositing the numbers in these columns makes it easier for you to go in then and edit, especially if you have to go in and specifically edit as I've just done. Um, that's going to conclude this overview of the E131 configuration page. As I said, I'll post a link to a video where I very specifically show how to map a very specific X-like sequence into the controller. We'll make it somewhat complicated so that you can really see how these things go into play. But this concludes this training video on Heinz Picks controller configuration on the E131 uh, tab.